Welcome back to another episode of NB Bassett. I'm your host, Donald Patterson. We're uh, along to give you a little bit of information and hopefully entertain you on the subject of bass fishing, tournament fishing, sport fishing in general. Once again, I want to uh, make some, make, give some thanks and, and make a correction. If you listened to my first episode, you heard me list off the, the businesses that have supported me throughout the last few years helping me along my journey in tournament fishing. I want to give thanks to those companies once again. Fish Bum Outfitters, Canadian made, once again, like I said, the one of the absolute premier fishing apparel manufacturers in the world as far as I'm concerned. Southern Yankee Baits, custom poured soft plastics out of North Carolina. And here's where I owe an apology. Last week I said War Dog Lures, which is a custom spinner bait manufacturer. Last week I had them based out of North Carolina as well, and I know better. That was just a little bit of nerves on my part. War Dog Lures out of Louisiana. And then finally, thanks go out to Northern Michigan Outfitters, or NMO. Northern Michigan Outfitters expanding its reach across Canada and the U.S. I want to thank them as well. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. I don't have a cough button, and this is a one-shot, one-take deal, so I apologize if I cough. I am still fighting a little bit of a cold. I want to thank you all for listening to, to our debut episode last week. I hope everyone enjoyed it. I had some great feedback. Some people agreed with me. Some people didn't. But, hey, that's the nature of what we do. I'm not looking for everybody to agree with me. If I can spark a conversation or two, then as far as I'm concerned, my mission is accomplished. So... Moving on to this week's episode, it uh, I, I, I was going to go and script, and I script isn't natural. I did at least put more than 15 seconds thought, 15 seconds worth of thought into this week's topic, uh, unlike last week where it was completely off the cuff. I debated the first couple days after I recorded last week's episode of what I'd talk about this week, and then I received a few questions from people who listened or just friends in general, and it basically sparked my idea for what I want to do this week. You want to get into tournament fishing. You you want to start. You've never done it before. Whose door do you knock on? Who do you talk to? How do you, how do you start down that road? Well, I can only speak from personal experience here in New Brunswick, but I'm sure there's similar circumstances all across the country, all across North America. Anywhere that there's tournament fishing, I'm sure there's something comparable. You have a few questions you have to ask yourself. Number one, are you set on a particular species? Number two, what are your finances? Tournament fishing is not a cheap sport. Don't get me wrong, I love it. I don't want to, wouldn't trade it for the world. But a man or a woman should never put their finances on the line for fun. If you're not going to make a living at it, just remember that it is just for fun. <coughs> Excuse me again. So, once again, finances, major consideration. I'm going to go back and I'm going to cover each of these topics a little more in depth. Uh, the other thing is, do you have a partner? If not, where will you find one? And the partner you find, are their finances secure? It's all, it's all a balancing game. And then what it comes down to is schedules. You look at the schedules that are for, for the, the options that are available in your area and say which one fits best with your family time because not only should a tournament angler never put their finances on the line just for a hobby, a tournament angler should never put his family on the line just for his hobby. There's a balance that has to be struck and if that particular schedule Con, you know, conflicts with children's birthdays or uh, planned family vacations that you have to really weigh that out. Yes, once you get into it, you'll get addicted to it. It's going to be important to you. But at the end of the day, your family should be more important. So let's go right back to subject number one. Are you set on a species? Here in New Brunswick specifically, and I have done both of these options, there are 
pickerel tournaments, chain pickerel. A uh, lot less money, a lot of fun nonetheless. Uh, my partner and I, Jason, this is how we got started in tournament fishing. We talked about joining one of the bass tours. And then we talked about it some more, and it's like, dollar for dollar, experience-wise, why don't we start at something a little lower, I'm not going to say lower caliber, because we fished against some phenomenal anglers in those pickerel tournaments, but it's something that's a little less pressured, it's a little more just for fun. Yeah, there's a little bit of money on the line, we were throwing $50 a boat for the tournament, but this was a foot in the door for us. It allowed us to see, did we still have the competition itch as much as we thought we did? We went out for two seasons and fished a small pickerel series. First year they ran four tournaments, second year they ran three. Along the way we supplemented with a couple other thrown in fun tournaments just to keep going. And that gave us our taste, that gave us our introduction and that got us, pardon the pun, hooked on tournament fishing. Then we met some new friends, uh, and I will to this day say that Jeff Rathburn and Dean Jones, the 2013 NB Pro Bass Champions, were directly responsible for Jason and I making the jump to competitive bass angling. Uh, they fished at a tournament that Jason and I organized, a charity tournament for the Alzheimer's Society called Fishing for Memories, a pickerel tournament. And we got talking afterwards, and they were kind of pushing, not pushing, but encouraging us to make the switch. And the following season, that's when we did. So, it depends on you as an angler. Do you feel you're stronger at one species than another? Because if there's enough of that species in an area, I'd be willing to bet if you look hard enough, you'll find a turn. So that's topic number one, species. Topic number two, finances. As I said before, you should never put your finances on the line just to fish for fun. The options that are available to you you have you don't have to fish a series there are a number of one-off fun tournaments for different species the pickerel tournaments that i mentioned here in new brunswick the average cost per them for those tournaments pardon me runs between 25 and 35 dollars per angler entry fee. split your money on your gas buy a little bit of food you're good to go for the day there are club tournaments. Fredericton Anglers Club here in New Brunswick is one example. It's a fun, introductory type set of tournaments. You pay, I, I believe, and don't quote me on this, I believe it's a $10 membership fee to the Fredericton Anglers Club for the year. And then it's relatively low cost, under $50 entry fees for each tournament and they have a number of them throughout the year on different bodies of water. So there's some lower cost options. If you really want to pursue bigger and better things, I, I shouldn't say better, better's not really fair because these, or these opportunities are all great in their own right. But to pursue a higher cost, if nothing else, level of competition, uh, look around look around every jurisdiction will have something i personally fish and jason and i personally fish in the nbsfa the new brunswick sport fishing association an association which just a couple weeks ago i was named a member of the board of directors of uh, it's more expensive there's a lot of tournaments through the run of the summer our seasons here in the great white north are relatively short so there's a lot of tournaments crammed into just a few months. Our costs are $150 entry fee per tournament, so $75 per angle. Gas, well, we've had days where we've burnt $5 worth of gas. 
we've had days we've burnt well over a hundred dollars worth of gas depends on your body of water but it's all a factor you can't expect just because the guy sitting beside you is the guy that owns the boat and you're the the passenger you're equal partners boat gas truck gas hotel rooms if necessary the only thing you're on your own for is your food your coffee your cigarettes if you smoke that sort of stuff your personal items but if it's something that affects the team split her down the middle so your finances will come into play and you can look around and you can find other options uh, last year in May the aforementioned Mr. Jeff Rathburn and I went down to Maine we fished a tournament down he actually fished quite steady down in the state of Maine last year with the Maine Blade Runners now with the Canadian dollar the way it is there's another consideration because I know a number of guys from New Brunswick that have opted to travel to Maine the last couple of years. With the dollar, the exchange rate the way it is, that plays into their finances as well. So, before I ramble too much on any one subject, let's move on. So, we started off with species, finances. What else did we have in there? Obviously, your family time is another subject. Your family is the most important factor in tournament fishing. The most factor, the important factor in tournament fishing. If you don't have support at home, you're not going to have any fun. If every time you go to load up your rods and your tackle, you catch grief, you're not going to have any fun. If you're worried, you know, am I going to get an ultimatum when I get home? You're not going to have any fun. Find the balance. If your kids resent your hobby, it takes the fun out of it. I'm not going to say there aren't days that my wife gets perturbed. But I'm lucky for the most part. If, if I put the effort forward to find that balance, then I know I have her support. So, it's, I, I can't stress this enough, folks, I really can't. I hate to use cliche little phrases and terms. Everyone's heard the term, happy wife, happy life. It's not completely untrue. As much as I hate using little gimmicky catchphrases like that, it's not completely untrue. When you are a tournament angler, especially at a high level, there's a lot of commitment, a lot of time. If you're not fishing in a tournament, nine chances to ten, you should be pre-fishing for your next one. Or out, even if you're not pre-fishing a particular body of water, you're out testing new gear, trying new baits, practicing techniques that you need to work on. It's all part of the game. And if you can't commit to that, and your family isn't behind you for you to commit to that, then it's going to take the wind rate out of your sails. You need to strike that balance, sit down, have a conversation with your spouse, uh, make sure your kids know, make sure you plan certain activities throughout the summer and say, okay, this weekend the boat stays in the garage. You know, or this weekend, the boat's coming out, but we're going as a family to this body of water, and we're just going to have fun. If the fish aren't biting, we'll put the rods away, and we'll just fire the boat up, and we'll cruise around. You have to find that compromise. I, I, I don't know. I guess this one hits home for me, because I do have a young son, and... I will admit that last year, I didn't strike the balance as well as I should have. This year, I can promise to my wife and my son that I'm going to find that balance better. Because I love what I do. I don't, want to, I don't want to go a summer and not be on the water. I've met some phenomenal people who I, I, I look forward to seeing every couple weeks. But this summer, 
there's going to be a couple stretches where I might go more than a couple weeks without seeing them.